What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we're doing Michaela's Hallig Tree Guide. Now, you may have heard of this place before or the boss inside of it itself as being one of the hardest bosses in the game and I will agree with that statement. It is a very frustrating one but we've got all the tips and tricks on how to help you out with that boss fight as well as getting through the entire area. Now that being said, if you don't know how to get to this location, I'll leave a link down in the description below on my previous video of uh, consecrated uh, snow fields. That's how you get here. I've got the location time stamped in that video, so just hit that link down there if you don't know how to get here already. Where we're going to be starting off from is the Hallig Tree Canopy, though. I've got more than a few things to cover inside of this video, so let's get it started. Now, we'll be starting off on the branches, root system of the Hallig Tree, essentially. It would be uh, a bit frustrating over here. There's more than a few trumpeteers that'll be blowing uh, those bubblicious magic bubbles at you. It's going to be uh, very frustrating, trust me. The range on that uh, ability is quite irritating but over to our right we'll have a sacramental bud Now you can jump down over here but we'll be using that a bit later on we'll head over to the left towards these uh or this fungus over here and on our right we should be able to drop down onto another branch start pushing forward bit of a bigger trumpeteer over here but we can actually push him off grab up the gold rune head over to the left now we'll be jumping down from this section right after we take out this trumpeteer like i said before those bubbles are going to be very irritating but we'll jump down over here on the right in the middle of those uh branches it's going to be more than a few ants down here and who i'll tell you right now those ants can knock you off pretty quickly we'll also have a fat boy trumpet here lucky enough not too hard to take him down but he'll be more frustrating later on trust me now we'll get a little nice little headgear back here pretty much more for cosmetic in my opinion but if that's what you're going for, you know, troll some people in PvP, by all means. Ants are going to be extremely frustrating, though. Do watch out for them spitting acid as well. It may not be 100% one-shot now, especially with uh, all the fat boy armor we have on, but it's still going to be a devastating blow, and the range on it is quite irritating. And like I said before, there may be more than a few frustrating moments with these ants. Lucky enough, if you do drop down over here to this little pile of fungus over here, you can kind of trap those ants and take them down as you push over in this section. I believe up here on our left is going to be another one of those smithing stones. Level 8 possibly. I believe that's what it says. Then we'll be able to double back. I believe we're going to be heading back onto the branch system on our right. Once we get down a little bit, we take it a, well, left over here first. Take down the trumpeteers. We'll have one more item to grab up over here. I believe... Yes, it's going to be on top of this fungus over here. I can't quite remember what it was. Ah, that's right. We've got another one of those uh, pumpkin-looking things that says things. This time it's my beloved. Very uh, creepily. You know, It's one of those moments I still don't know what they're used for. I'd really like to. If you know, please let me know down in the comments. I don't know whether or not it activates something or... You know, it's some kind of phrase that may turn enemies friendly. Who knows? But going back up the middle branch, we'll be heading over to the left, going onto this uh, smaller root system or branch system over here. More than a few trumpeteers. And we'll have a couple of scarlet rot uh, spitting plants over here as well, including one of the bigger ones. Do be aware of that. It will start shooting out its magical abilities somewhere around uh, along the lines. Now, some of those trumpeteers can also drop their weapon as well, so do be on the lookout for that. Don't know how powerful the weapon is, but would be something funny to use inside of PvP as well. But over here on the right, we're going to have another stone sword key. Then we'll be doubling back up. Now, I ended up taking out this plant. Honestly, you're not really going to get anything out of it. You might as well just grab the uh, item right there on the right. Only thing you're really going to get out of uh, taking down this plant, well, that's frustrating, is just simply some crafting material out of it. We'll get a consumable lower on our right. Obviously, uh, it killed me, so I'm going to have to get my revenge by this point, but then I'll never touch it again. But sometimes some of those plants can drop things, just like some of those bigger enemies do watch out, you know, especially when you're trying to uh, make some moves up here. I know a lot of people will probably end up dying to fall damage, trust me. Happened to me uh, more than a few times. Very frustrating, but like I said before, just a bit of crafting material. Then we'll be heading back down. I forget which direction. It's so confusing up here. I believe we'll be heading over to the right. 
here in a second. Once we jump down over to the right, or do we? I think I jumped down from over here on the left. I would highly suggest going to the right branch. That one could have been, uh, you know, a bit troublesome, but we'll start heading down that main branch, you know, take out those trumpeteers so we don't get hit from behind. We may still have some ants to deal with as well. But over here on the right, we'll need to immediately jump over. We've got one of those fat boy trumpeteers over on our left. He's constantly going to be firing, so we need to keep on rolling to the right. Grab up that gold rune and then be able to take him out fairly quickly. Because that bubble attack that he starts striking out with is deadly. Could be a one-shotter as well, considering it blows out so many of those bubbles. Now over on our right, we will have another one of those larger plants, but I can't remember specifically whether or not there was something behind it. But over here on the right, we have another one of those lost ashes of war. And then over on our left, we're going to have another one of the fat boy trumpeteers with a couple of the smaller trumpeteers, medium-sized trumpeteer. You know, we got the whole bandwagon over here. It's the uh, the orchestra nobody wanted. Which is probably the best way to put it. But be aware, man, that uh, that fat boy trumpeteer, his, his abilities, and I believe even the uh, medium-sized one, they, phew, those bubbles can be devastating. You kind of want to be constantly on the move with these ones. Keep that health, uh, or keep an eye on that health at pretty much all times during this fight, just to make sure that you can maintain, but we'll actually get a summons for those trumpeteers. We can call in our own orchestra for any fight now. But from that point, we'll be heading over to the right and dropping down to the middle branch. Now, just behind us as we drop down, there is a uh, larger rune to grab up, and then we'll be doubling back down the branch. Now, I picked this up first instead of uh, after I killed them. That's why I had to kind of get that weird kind of cut right there. But it's much safer to go and take down the bigger boys and then go across that uh, middle branch considering it's a lot of Scarlet Run. But we'll have that Lost Grace over here. And just down here, after we kill these guys, there's going to be a bigger guy dropping down. Be aware of that. He has uh, gotten the better of me more than a few times. And it is very frustrating. And he does randomly spawn in at certain moment or certain places just along this small path over here. But we'll need to head up this uh, ladder first, grab up a few items. We've got a consumable right there and across the way, I believe another, we actually get a talisman that increases our defense against non-physical or non-physical damage. Then we'll come back down and like I said before, this guy, uh, this one bigger boy, uh, monkey Neanderthal type guy. He could drop down at any moment. Now, there will be a couple of these fungus zombie guys that will try to push you off, so be aware of that. I know a couple of people in chat told me that they did end up getting pushed off by this, but like I said before, he shows up at random sometimes. He's, you know, just be on the lookout for that guy. Now, sometimes he'll drop over here. Sometimes he'll drop over there, so just just be on the lookout for that guy. It's It's very frustrating. Now, I can't tell you how many times I came down. It must have been five deaths by this point. But over here on the right, we're going to have some bigger boy uh, Neanderthal-type monkeys. They've got the uh, you know great axe on hand. A little bit harder to stagger, so be aware of that. We've got two of them coming down here. But Smithing Stone on the left. And back here on the right is going to be uh, another one of the flying types. So this is going to be the one with the great axe as well. You know, Be careful with him. He's got that wide berth with that uh, cleave ability of his. And not too easy to stagger. But from this point, we'll grab up some large bones right there. And just back here, we're going to have another golden rune right there. And then we'll need to jump across right here. Now, if you choose to go down the ladder, there's going to be two larger plants down there. And that's pretty much it. We've got two consumables. Just in the next room, we've got another one of those bigger boy Neanderthal type guys. There's going to be a guy on the right and the left that's going to be those flying monkey Neanderthals. Immediately come out, swing that guy on the right, take the one on the left, and then all we have to deal with is that bigger boy. He can be quite frustrating. He's fast. He's got his moves, but we can stagger him. As long as you can get that damage in and avoid his hits, we'll be doing pretty solid. But just after we defeat them, we've got that ancient dragon smithing stone. Now from that point, we'll be heading over to the right. Now off to the left, there is an opening. You could get a gold rune out there. Just didn't grab it in this uh, one gameplay or this one footage uh, spree right here. Just couldn't uh, couldn't be bothered to go back and put it back in. You know, it's it's just right there. If you want to stop it, go over to there. Good on you. But another smithing stone on top of here. We'll have some ants over on our left. Now down here, there's going to be three of these uh, 
snails spawning these crystal guys in. Be sure to just take out the uh, the snails themselves. Don't even bother with the crystal guys. It's not worth the damage you'll be taking or health pots you may take from it. They're automatically just aggro by themselves. And then we'll have three of those fungus zombies inside here. Now we'll need to jump inside here. And on our right, after we grab that smithing stone, there's going to be three ants on this branch system over here. Those ants are going to be extremely frustrating. So be sure to try and make quick work of them. Really try to avoid getting in the middle of the pack as well. Because as soon as you're stuck between all three of them, it's going to be one of those moments you can't roll out of. And that's a, you know, instant death moment. Trust me. I came down to this spot more than a few times. It's, uh, it's irritating to think of. But lucky enough, we have that lost grace just behind us. So if they do get you, it's not too far a walk to get over there. Now you can't jump onto that other roof. I just quite missed it. Lucky enough, there is a spot to land down below, but we'll head back up this ladder if you do miss it. It's going to be more than a few of those fungus zombies, you know, giving us a good feeling of that, uh, last of us kind of uh, vibe on this one but we'll grab up that smithing stone over on the left now we will be able to jump up over on these roots behind us after i've uh, you know had a good look around and just before that for whatever reason i decided to go up on top of this even though there's uh, nothing over here it's just kind of another spot to jump up on top of i guess maybe a bit easier to jump over from there but inside here we'll have another one of those gold runes on the right and just in the back, I believe there's one more item after we take out some of these zombies. Fairly easy to take them down, but yeah, they still can bite. It, it's reminiscent of that uh, Last of Us moment. We'll have a, I forget the name of it, Amber Medallion, something, something along those lines. Just further increasing our stamina from that. I do believe I actually use that one. It's quite beneficial when it comes to increasing your stamina overall. Especially if you're on that melee side of things. But over here on the left, we'll be jumping across. Be a couple more of those fungus zombies over here. Or clickers. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of the whole time. Yeah, we'll just call them clickers from now on. Much easier to say. Now, after I've had a good joyous time trying to jump on the fungus because I think something's up there, we'll jump on down. It's going to be a couple more of those monkey Neanderthals. And then over on our left, or over on the right first, we'll have one room to grab up uh, one item out of. It's going to be, I uh, forget the sacramental bud. Kind of irritating that some of these uh, purple items glowing on the ground, especially some of those orange ones later on, they're kind of a letdown when we grab them up. And it's a bit more of crafting material, and there's certain spots where you can just farm those items. So it really does feel like a letdown in certain moments. But we'll have another hero rune over there. Now with this guy, you want to kite this guy back into this uh, gondola or gazebo when i always think gondola a gazebo type uh structure over here that way you don't get knocked off like i did very frustrating now you can get the sneak attack on this guy he, he's gonna you know he doesn't even notice his dead buddy get up behind him you know he's got a bit more health than the other ones and a bit more damage with some of those spell type abilities but from that point making quick work of him we got a smithing stone over on our left and inside of here another smithing stone now, we'll be able to go over to the right now. You don't want to take this lift. It's just going to take you all the way down to that first Lost Grease that we got just down below from the branch system. Now, up here, you're going to notice we're going to have a very familiar boss. Same, pretty much uh, close to the same one as the uh, Karia Manor. Very similar to that guy. As long as you have the summons with you, you should be able to make pretty quick work of this. As long as you're just upgraded, got those glow boards in. Should be able to take him down fairly easy, but he will still have that uh, ranged attack ability. Lucky enough, I got him down in one try, and we will get a halibird off of him. That's going to be doing some magical damage. Now, from that point, we'll be able to grab up this Lost Grace over here, and then start heading forward. Now, we'll start heading down this stairway, that I believe a super long ladder right here. Whew. I would not want to climb that in real life, or even go down it feel like my legs would be shaken. But over here on the right, we've got another chest that's going to give us another ancient dragon smithing stone. Another one of those moments where I'm just kind of like, you know, you see that orange glow and you're thinking, ooh, we got some powerful loot here. And then it's just another crafting material that really isn't of uh, much use to me right now, considering we've already maxed out the uh, level of our weapon already. But from this point, we get into a bit more stable ground, almost castle-like structure. And on our right is going to be another consumable. 
On our left, we've got a couple of those bigger boy knights. These are a bit easier to deal with. If you've dealt with these guys before, stagger them really easy. By the time they start crossing their weapons together and making a shield out of it, you really do want to back up until they have a moment where it glows yellow and then pushes forward. Then you'll be able to strike and get some serious damage in. But fairly easy to deal with them. Over on our left, we have uh, one more item inside of here. I believe it's a consumable. That's no, another gold rune. Then from that point, we'll start heading back over to the left. There's going to be a lot of enemies that are completely unaware of you, just laying on the ground most of the time. Very easy to make quick work of them at this point. Over here on our right, we will have another smithing stone, and then we'll be able to jump up on top of this branch after we take that guy down. Now do be careful with jumping on this branch. I don't believe you'll die from falling on this one, but over here on our left, we'll have another sword, I believe. Can't remember the name of it, but that's going to be uh, one that does a lot of holy damage to it. Could be good for some of those melee uh, faith builds. And down this ladder, we will have a lift that will connect to the boss room, but we won't be able to use it until the point that we've pretty much finished off the boss. But it could be one of those moments where, uh, you know, we just kind of found this early. Could be something that's just tied in, especially since it's, uh, I believe the name of the weapon had Michaela in it. I believe that's how you say that name in this area. We'll find out later. But from that point, we'll head to the stairway on the right. Have another one of those electric shock arrows. A couple of enemies over here. I believe just about each one of these enemy types that's glowing yellow is going to be a holy type damage. So if you have a talisman that uh, decreases holy damage, might be a good idea to throw it on. Especially if you're a caster, maybe a bit squishy. That could help out. Going to be another smithing stone over there on the right. A couple of enemies just, you know, just laying down in the dark. I mean, they just, I don't know how he didn't hear me come in and just slay all of his uh, comrades, but, you know, they're just completely oblivious. Over here on the right, though, we've got another one of those stone sword key rooms. Inside of here, I believe it's another medallion. No, it's going to be another faith, faith type spell. Not sure how beneficial it is. Haven't gotten to my caster build just yet. We'll be having that coming up, uh, here in the next week, at least. Over here on the right, we've got some more of those consumables. And inside here, we've got two of those, uh, what is it, Clean Rot Knights. I believe that was the name of them. If you can get them combined together, maybe a bit easier to take them down. Like I said before, you can stagger them quite easily. But they will have a couple of uh, magical abilities to them. So do watch out if you get a little bit of a distance from them and they start sprouting out some of their abilities. Going to be another smithing stone over there on the right, and on the left outside on the ledge, another gold rune. But from that point, we'll start heading over to the right. Just more and more of those enemy types that, uh, you know, they're just having a carefree day out here. But inside here, just behind the branch, we'll take out one more enemy and then walk up on top of this branch. And then start heading over to the left. Over on the right, it's going to be another one of those old fangs. Another enemy over here on the left. Now, just above us is an item that we'll get pretty much towards the end of the video. You can't jump up to it from this spot right here, but it's one of those things I had to come back and get, so that's why it's going to be at the end of the video. There's one small area, one small route that we'll just add on to just at the end. Trust me, very easy to get to it. Not going to take us too, too much time. But up ahead, we've got one of the most aggro spots inside of this, uh, well, it's... Well, it's still, yeah, it's number one aggro spot inside of this uh, entire zone. There's going to be four different, I uh, forget the name of them, four of those hydralisks, I believe the name is. It's going to be very frustrating, and we're going to have an Ur tree, two knights inside of here. There's going to be two of those hydralisks up top on the uh, right portion of it as well. You can come back here and kind of take out the knights if you want to. It would be somewhat of a, small, uh, a smart play. This could be one of the routes you could take, considering the Ur tree can't walk back here. So that may be one strat to get it done, but I died on that one. Now, the second time in, you know, I figured out we could summon as soon as we get across the bridge. And for me, the best best strat was to kind of focus in on the uh, Ur tree itself, because as soon as you kill this Ur tree champion, if you do end up dying right after you kill him, He's going to be gone the next time you spawn in. It's going to make it a bit easier. You're just going to have the uh, two different knights to deal with. And this Erdtree champion will be spitting out that uh, 
scarlet rod so be aware of that not only does that scarlet rod give you the scarlet rod build up but it will be doing that damage over time as well can be very frustrating as you'll notice I, i've been through this more than a few times immediately i just take out one of those hydro list guys but this time i completely focused on the Ur tree itself let the uh, clone take over the knights himself and uh, tried to basically make him the aggro target for everything else and just hyper focused on that Ur tree try and do uh, move as much as i can considering we still have those bowmen up top that are shooting down at us very frustrating but as soon as we get that uh, Ur tree champion down I believe we'll be getting, yeah, we'll get in a, a larger rune type. And then, you know, obviously I've eaten through all of my health bots by this point. Tried to grab the uh, the Lost Grace in this next room, but sadly enough, as long as you have something aggroed on you, you, you can't touch that uh, Lost Grace and we won't be able to spawn there. And there's absolutely no way we can sneak by and grab that up. But, lucky enough... After you take down that Erd tree, we're going to have no worries from that. We're going to make quick work of those knights. As long as we have the clone with us, he's constantly getting the aggro of those hydro uh, hydralists up top. And we'll be able to take down everything that's going to be aggro, so that way we can move into the next room and grab that uh, Lost Grace and not have to deal with this problem anymore. Be some Sacramental Bud over there on the left as well. Now, just behind us, we'll also have another one of those Smithing Stones. And just making sure everything's cleared out back here. And then we start pushing on forward. Now over to our left is going to be three of those crystal warriors. It's going to be very frustrating. Highly suggest having the summons for this. As you'll notice, within these closed quarters that we have right here, there's going to be one of them that's a caster pretty much getting an area of effect on the entire room with most of his casts. And they can be quite devastating. And before you uh, crack that crystal, obviously, they're not going to be staggered by any type of hit that you uh, make on them. And whew, I mean, they're, they're just going to be laying that damage out. Now, if you want or if you do die, you'll have to go and walk out just a bit just to make that summons that way. We can push on in here because if you push in here, you won't be able to make that summons. But it's just going to make this uh, whole experience right here a whole lot smoother for you as long as you have that summons with you. But as you'll notice, try to focus in on one. Try to make sure that each one of them gets cracked. You kind of want to work from one to the next that way your uh, summons can actually get that stagger effect on them not take as much damage and try to take as much aggro as possible but just after that we'll open up that chest and i believe we've got ooh, yeah that's right we get a crystal sword that's got the rotten ability to it so it's going to cause that scarlet rot build up each time that we're striking and it's got some magic damage to it we'll find uh, a couple of weapons like that along the way and some of them will drop from the crystal warriors that we'll see coming up later on as well. So in some some cases, it may be a good idea to farm them at certain points just to get some of those Scarlet Rot build up uh, crystal weapons. Now, sadly enough, if you uh, drop down to the pot over here, there's uh, nothing inside of it. Would have been a, a solid idea for some loot, but sadly enough, not always. Uh, it sometimes feels like they're uh, trolling with some of these paths. Now, in this next area... We're going to have a lot of Scarlet Rots, pretty much like a Scarlet Rot River. And we'll have some of those prawns again. Oh, hate them. Hate them, hate them, hate them. We'll have more than a few of these guys, and especially in this area, they'll be uh, pretty much swimming in the Scarlet Rot. They, uh, I guess they love it. That's their, uh, that's their breeding ground in a way, I suppose. Maybe it's something that they, uh, maybe it's some type of excrement that they actually, uh, produce inside of here maybe that's what it is they're just uh using this water as their toilet so that makes it scarlet rot who knows but from this point as soon as we get into this water we're going to be slowed down like the entire time so you're pretty much just going to want to roll as quick as you can we'll have some of the baby prawns in here very frustrating but a lot easier to take out but they will be able to shoot out that uh that projectile that the larger ones can as well but lucky enough, while we're inside of the Scarlet Rod uh, River or water or whatever whatever you would like to call it, they won't be able to shoot from that. They'll just be crawling and trying to attack us. Now, from this point, we'll need to head over to the left, get behind this tree, you know, trade over your armor. I chose to put on the fungus just to get a little bit more immunity out of it. We'll have a gold rune on our right. 
Now we'll want to head down this ladder first as there's going to be a lost grace down here. That way, you know, we don't have to go all the way back to that last lost grace and come through everything again. Now, just over on our right, we're going to have another one of those uh, prawns over here. And then on our right, there's going to be a branch leading over to a legendary item. Now, in the middle of this area, as soon as we jump down in, there's going to be one of those slither monsters. And the rest of this is that scarlet rot water. Hate to say it, but it's one of those moments where I feel like you got to take the scarlet rot no matter what. You're just going to need to, you know, get your timing right. You know, if you try to do it from the outside edge, you know, this guy is super large. And if you get hit by one of those moves, he may just end up uh, pushing you on off over the edge. Could be very frustrating, especially if you get into that last leg moment where he's finally at that low health. He just does one tail swipe or throws his hands down or does that explosion move. Could be very frustrating. But if you got the timing down with this guy, you should be able to make sure that you're not getting those uh, hits in. I did fairly well against this guy. Lucky enough, I've had a lot of practice with this guy over the time of playing this game. So, you know, he's getting to be one of those common type enemies that I, I'm not too worried about. Just a larger health pot to him. But we'll get a golden seed out of him. Then we'll be able to jump down into that scarlet water. And I believe we're getting a grave. It's either, I can't remember which one of them, but it's the... Uh, largest of those uh, glow warts. Now over here on the left, we'll need to jump down onto this branch over here in order to get back up on top and head back to that Lost Graze. I mean, you could uh, you could arguably just uh, go ahead and pull up the map and spawn over there, but up to your uh, personal preference. Now from this point, obviously you want to stop by that Lost Graze, refill on your health bots, or possibly level up if you got enough runes for that. Then we'll start heading over here to the left, and we'll start moving down this branch system. Now, over here on the left, we'll need to jump up, uh, jump over onto this ledge down here. And then jump over to this branch on our left. There's going to be no item down here on our right. I should have, uh, you know, it's the one time those writings on the ground aren't trolling me. But we'll head over here, and then we'll jump over to the left. Instead of jumping down where that purple item is, I can't remember what it was, but we'll be able to get to that here in a second. Now, there's another item that we need to grab up that's going to be very important later on. Now, jumping over here to the left onto this branch seems like you can't do it. Maybe uh, a little bit troublesome, but you should be able to get it done. Now, there's going to be a ladder at the very lower portion of this on the ground level that you can climb up to get up to this point. So if you did jump down on that other right portion, you'll still be able to get up here and get down to this loot over here. Now it's going to be, is there anything over here? I can't remember. Negative. It's just another one of those uh, areas that we can walk over to that's just not beneficial to us. But over here on the right, we'll be able to drop down on top of this. Now, don't drop down just yet. We want to make sure that we drop down onto the beams underneath this roof and then over to our left. We've got a chest over here next to these prawns, small and big. Very irritating to deal with, but we'll get a talisman that's quite unique in here, a legendary one that's going to enormously, uh, oh, what is it, uh, take down our physical damage taken. It's going to be one that you'll definitely want to use in certain moments. Now, you want to jump down over to the right, not the left. The one over on, or the ledge over on the right is going to connect to that uh, purple item that we saw previously, but I will still have that footage coming up here soon, obviously. This next area can be a bit irritating, especially with all these prawns in it and more than a few of those holy knights down there. So there, there's going to be some moments to die. But from this point, we'll head over to the left side of this building. It's going to be one more item out here, which is going to be another one of those butterflies for us. Now, we don't want to take the room behind us just yet. That's going to be the area to the boss. And we'll immediately head out of this building, head over to the right. This section is going to be pretty much all the knights and soldier type enemies. Over here on the right is going to be a knight sitting down. Now, they can be very frustrating, and uh, those shield bashes, and with them both combined, having that holy power, it can be uh, a frustrating one to deal with. Now, you know, generally, there are certain moments where I can just make quick work of these knights, and then other moments where it just feels like I can't even get it done. But starting back from the Lost Grace point before, like I said, we got to show you where that other item is. Now, if you jump down on the right, obviously, you've already grabbed this one up, but over here on the right on this ledge, it's going to be another one of those butterflies. And then we'll be able to jump back down. And then now we're going to take on those knights again, get our revenge, finally make quick work of them. Not have to deal with this area again. Goodness, I hate those knights. But I was able to make pretty quick work of them. Sometimes it feels like uh, 
you know, my weapon goes through the shield and then other times it feels like that shield really does take a beating and just soak up all the damage I could possibly deal to him. Very frustrating. But there's going to be more than a few of these uh, knights down here, so be aware of that. Some of them magical, some of them holy. They're going to have their special abilities and spearmen, no less, are going to be uh, just as devastating as that great sword wielder. Now over on our left, a couple more of those enemies. We'll find more than a few of them sitting down down here. Over on our left, another one of those crafting materials. Leave nothing on our right just past down here, but on our right over here, the couple or another one of those knights. Very irritating to deal with. That shield bash gets me every time. But lucky enough, ooh, you know, just watching this back, you know, it's blood pressure rising already. Immediately, another one of those shield bash moments. You know, it's like sometimes you could just take them down within a couple of swings, you know, just get them staggered and stun locked, and other times it just feels like that shield really does eat all the damage. Some of them feel stronger than others as well. This could be one of those moments. On our right, another one of those larger runes, and we will have another knight. This one, pretty much one of the easier ones to deal with. Every time you get the bowman one, generally, before he pulls out that sword and shield, you should be able to stagger, lock him, and just really beat away at him and just be done with him. Now, there's going to be more than a good bit of crafting material down here. Might want to grab it up. Could be beneficial for you later on, I believe. Some type of arrow uses that, or... I can't remember what it was. I had something in my uh, crafting items that was uh, in need of those, uh, what looks like lilies, I suppose. I, I believe it's a lily. Yeah. Sometimes can't remember the na name of these items. But from that point, we'll start heading back up and then we'll be heading off to the left of the building. This is going to be Prawnville over here. There's going to be small ones and big ones all over the place, kind of resting in between some of these graves. And I'll tell you right now, those prawns, that, that move where they just start scuttling off to the left or the right after a few swings, goodness. And then they just stab that spear in or start doing that long range attack. Whew, that's a frustrating one. But as long as you can get that damage in, try to avoid it. Oh, God, oh, yeah, that's right, I forgot about this. Now, every time I tried to get the sneak attack on this guy on the right, but I, I guess I couldn't get the quite right angle because I know you can sneak attack these guys but from just behind that tree it's just not working every single time I tried it but we will have two of them right here and there's going to be about four more actually it might be five more down below so take as uh, few of few of them on as uh, you possibly can you know try to do it one at a time it's going to be a whole lot easier if you do if you've got some type of uh, ash of war on your weapon really just try to use it on these guys we've got a lost grace uh you know, just behind us. <clears throat> you might as well get it done, and we'll be hitting another one just after, but we've got another one of those glow warts on the right. There'll be another one up on our left as well. We're going to have three of those prawns over here, and sadly enough, you know, well, you could, you could shoot one of them with an arrow and it possibly not aggro all of them, so that could be one strat to kind of hit one at a time with an arrow, pull them off one at a time. I definitely don't think of these things in the heat of the moment, so that's why you don't see it in the gameplay footage, but, you know, I <laughs> try what I can to uh, get it done with brute force with that Bloodhound Fang. But over here on the right, we will have three more. There's going to be one here on our right and then another one on the left. Now, we will be able to uh, pull that one on the left without aggroing the one on the right just sitting in front of those graves, so do be... Or, do make sure to kind of kite him back here and make sure that you get him one-on-one -on -one instead of having to deal with the other one. Now, this guy over on our right behind this tree, though, we have another glove wart. We'll be able to sneak up behind this guy and get that sneak attack moment. Now, you'll notice, oh, you know, I thought I had him, had that last little bit of health, but we come back for that revenge. Take that prawn down with, uh, with a vengeance, I suppose. Really, uh, Put the effort in on that one, but we've got another bell bearing and a glow board over here on the left, and that's going to be this right portion, or left portion, if you will, from the building itself, or church, I think. That's all we're going to need to get or grab from down here. Now we'll be heading back into that building and then through the uh, back entrance now. So another one of those moments where I didn't have any health pots, and uh, we still got a couple of those prawns to deal with. Didn't have enough health to really push on through we get that one but then we still get hit by that 
<clears throat> but after going back to the Lost Grace, coming back down, we'll take this lift all the way down, and then we're going to be outside the room with the boss fight. Now, this boss fight, this uh, Melania, she's a doozy. They weren't lying when this was one of the hardest boss fights in the game. Not only does she have a uh, lifesteal ability, so each time that she hits you, she will be stealing life from you and gaining it back to herself, but she's got one specific move with this weapon that is, uh, I'll tell you right now, I probably spent three hours trying to figure out how to dodge this one move that she does now. In this gameplay footage, I, I don't have it showcased because lucky enough, I was able to stagger her before she was able to do it, but she'll lift up off the ground. You know, she'll just be floating there in the air. That's the cue when you know it's going to happen. Now you, you'll see my face right here. I was, I was ecstatic. You know, I thought I beat it. You know, in a couple of tries, I'm like, yeah, that's right. You know, hardest boss in the game. Who, who said that? And then uh, second phase opens up. This is when it gets worse. It's like the Bugs Life episode or uh, the Bugs Life movie. You know, she just uh, transforms into a beautiful butterfly. Well, it's pretty ugly and it's pretty irritating. That's what she turns into, in my opinion. But she'll immediately slam down, turn into a Scarlet Rose, Scarlet Rot Rose, that will deal damage to you if you're close to it or touching the petals. And then she'll be doing the same moves that she did previously. And there's that pretty much near impossible move to dodge from now i spent hours and hours trying to do this without a summons and then i was like you know what we, we've eaten up enough time by this point we're gonna do the summons trust me when i say save yourself the headache the rage the blood pressure the stroke level event of rage just use the summons now most of her moves are fairly easy to dodge they are a bit slow. There are some that are a bit more aggro than others. And she will have that lifesteal ability. So if your summons is aggroing her, he will be feeding her health. So you do kind of want to be right up in there with him at the same time. Now that's going to be that move that's just near impossible to dodge. It's got a 360 radius, multiple hits on it. Now you will be able to get this weapon from the remembrance from her, I've heard said that it is uh, unbelievably overpowered. So this is some one of those weapons that would be uh, something you want to grab up after, but it will have that move attached to it. Now that being said, like I said before, you kind of want to be a little bit aggro with her. She does have a stagger ability, and if you can get in there with the summons as well, you can stagger her quite easily, but do avoid taking as much of that damage as possible. Now when she comes down, you want to dodge it, then dodge back. Now, you, you know, your clone's going to be eating some of that damage, but he'll be able to walk through the pedals somehow without getting that damage. Or I believe he may have been getting damage, but from this point, this is when... Uh, you know, she gets a couple of uh, added moves to her. You know, she's got a spin kick, then she'll jump up, she'll slam down. Now, sometimes she'll slam down and she'll do a Scarlet Rod Explosion. I believe there it is. You notice it coming up with all those butterflies. You really want to make sure that your uh, summons is taking a lot of the aggro in this moment, especially when it comes to the moment when she starts floating above the ground and does that uh, special move attached to her weapon. You really want to avoid that damage because it can be an instant kill every time. It's what it's pretty much the one move that stopped me from really beating this one-on-one -on -one with this character. Every other attack move that she had, I was able to counter it. I was able to learn it and dodge it. But for the life of me, I you know, there was bits of the damage I could dodge and then other moments where it was just like every time she did that special ability, it was just an instant kill frustrating very irritating that's why i say highly or that's why i highly suggest you like this moment i mean you can already clearly see i'm i'm almost nearly dead and it's not even target locked on me lucky enough i was able to avoid that damage because that would have been very frustrating right there but she'll slam down and you want to be sure to avoid that uh, butterfly explosion after but as you'll notice we're getting pretty close to that moment she's still eating away at the health of that clone so you want to make sure that you're still applying that damage as much as possible. And then, boom, we finally got it after hours and hours and hours. That's a boss that I, I, I don't ever want to have to deal with again, honestly. 
But we'll get the great rune out of it and the remembrance. We'll be able to grab up this lost grace. Now, after you sit at this lost grace, a flower grows in the middle of the room. Not sure what that's all about. You know, if you know anything about this, let me know down in the comments. Is there a way to burn this? Is this something that could lead to something later on? I'm not 100% certain on it. But from that point, we'll need to head back to this lost grace point right here. No, no, not, not that one. This one. I forget the name of it, but it's going to be essentially right past that really aggro point with the Erd Tree Champion and everything. There's going to be a ladder just to the right of that. This is going to lead us onto the next portion of this area. Now we'll need to jump across over to the left onto this uh, support beam. I guess that's what you'd call it. Now we'll also have a smithing stone over here on the left, another enemy behind us, and over here in front of this uh, little shrine we'll have a summons for some of those uh, castle soldiers. Now just down here we're going to have another two of those scarlet or clean rot knights inside of here, so be aware of that. One of them's got the uh, sickle on him, so he'll be able to sling that thing as a uh, spinning blade towards you, a little ranged attack. Then the other one will be the spearman. Or are they both spearmen? I can't, I can't quite recall. They may be both spearmen. Now they they can be quite frustrating, and using some of these pillars it, to your advantage can be uh, detrimental to you. They will be able to attack around the edge of it and be able to do their spear attack, where they spear you up into the air, and it will cause a scarlet rot buildup on you. That will be a full scarlet rot buildup. I believe it does happen in this gameplay footage here in a second. He finally gets, or he gets that moment on, yep, immediately applies that Scarlet Rod effect to you. Very frustrating, but lucky enough, if you have those, uh, or if you have the crafting material, you'll be able to get that consumable to take that off fairly quickly. Now, we'll have another consumable over there on the left, and outside on this outer ledge is where we're about to jump down from. Now, in this uh, lower portion down here, we have this uh, bigger boy type of enemy, Mr. Arms and Legs Krabby Boy. Very frustrating. Now, he's got a slap attack that's uh, like no other. I mean, I'll tell you right now, they've got the slap champ slap championship out there, and this, this guy is uh, well, he's probably going to be breaking some rules, but he loves to slap. Now, he will be able to teleport, and he'll be able to spit out poison as well. Now, the poison will not only start uh, building up the poison on you, but it does have a damage over time effect. Anytime you're inside of it, you'll be getting some damage. But after we take him out, Got another one of those larger runes over there on the left. Another one of those moments where it's very frustrating that it's not an actual item. It's just a rune. But inside this room, we'll have three different of those crystal-type enemies. You want to take them on one at a time. You can just aggro one at a time. But after we take that one out, we'll head over to the left. There's one in the corner as well. We'll be able to get up one of those turtlenecks right there. But... Like I said before, this is one of those that you kind of want to be a little bit aggro with. You want to make sure you get them to the point where they're cracked. That way you can stagger them, get them down to their knees, finish them off fairly quickly. Now the next one that we have is going to be the caster type. So you really want to be aggressive with, with getting this guy cracked as quick as possible. Some of his abilities are very devastating when it comes to damage. So you want to make sure you take him down fairly quickly. Now with him, once we kill him, we actually do get his crystal spear that does the Scarlet Rock build up. And we'll also get that somber smithing stone. So that's why I say there could be a couple of these moments that'd be a good idea to farm them. I don't know if he drops it every single time. So if you don't get it in that moment, might be a good idea to jump back down here and grab that up. If that's something you're looking for. Or some type of weapon that you're looking to use later on. Now we'll still have more than a few of these uh, slap happy uh, crab boys. Very frustrating. Now uh, they, If you have the uh, proper upgraded weapon, you can... Deal the damage fairly quickly, but the, the stun lock effect from their slaps is the number one issue with them, and then teleporting, and then having that uh, that constant damage from that poison they'd spit out. Like I said, there's more than a few of them down through here, so have those health pots ready for this moment. You're going to be taking some damage, and it's going to be frustrating, but more than likely with enough damage, you should be able to take them out before dying. But over back here, we're going to have another one of those stone sword key rooms. And we'll be grabbing up a talisman that's actually going to increase some of our stats, similar to some of the other ones that we've had previously. I can't remember which stats that it's increasing, but you could pause the video right there, see what it's going to be increasing for you. Could be beneficial for you. I believe that one's more towards the caster side of things with arcane, faith, and uh, 
intellect or intelligence, as someone said in the comments. Intellect, intelligence, I mean, they're the same thing, guys. All right? Don't make a comment trying to correct me on that. It's You know what I'm talking about. Frustrating. But anyways, after that little moment of uh, having to call somebody out from the comments, from this point, we'll take out that last guy, grab up that... Uh, Smithing stone. I forgot we could also summons down here or cast summons down here. I should probably should have said that previously, but more than likely you've made quick work of those guys. You you made it through. But from that point we'll be heading over to the right or across the bridge. Do just uh, avoid all of the enemies right there. Don't don't even try to uh, attack them. You, you just run straight by them. Run straight by just about everything over here. Don't even worry about it. We're about to just jump over the ledge. Even if they are chasing you, they won't make it to you. Now, just over here, right where that uh, lift was, off to the right, we'll need to jump down. There's another Erdtree champion over here. He will be still, uh, or he's another one of the same type that's going to be. We'll also have a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Good lord, that's a long name. But this guy will be spitting out that Scarlet Rod uh, damage. And as, if you're standing in the area where he spits that out, it's going to be doing damage over time to you. It's going to be a very large amount of damage. There's also another one of those larger runes on the left side. Now with this guy, you kind of want to keep kiting him. Every time that he jumps up and jumps down, you kind of want to avoid that damage. Now I don't believe it goes out in a 360 radius. So if you have the ability to kind of run by him and go the other way, that could be beneficial for you. But... With this narrow area that they were that we're working with, not exactly the easiest, and you're pretty much just gonna have to keep backing up in those moments every time that he slams down like that. Then try to get to the other side of him. If you're running out of uh, space when it comes to going back and forth like this, with the uh, the golden magical ability, I mean it's it's pretty much uh, one of those moments you're gonna have to take the L on it, take that damage. Sadly enough, but lucky enough, it, it's not all of that or. Not that large amount of damage, and if you have the talisman that uh, increases your defense against the non-physical damage and the holy damage, you could put that on before jumping into this fight. But we'll also get his staff, which does cause Scarlet Rock build up as well. The colossal weapon could be benefit or could be interesting to use for a type of Scarlet Rock build that's for PvP, possibly. I'm interested in trying some of that out. I'll have some of that content coming up here in the future after we've uh, gotten most of these guides done. We'll start working on some uh, PvP builds. Just getting into a good bit of fun. Now, I forgot, uh, forgot about that moment. Once you get down to the other side of this, there'll be one of those Crystal Warriors. He's very dangerous. Trust me, he's one of those stronger casting types when it comes to these guys. And the, or the Clean Rot Champions across the way. You want to push into this room to make sure that you don't get hit from across the way from those guys. Very frustrating. From this point, we'll need to head back to the... Uh, Oh man, I can't read it from here. You saw the uh, last grace point though, right there. We'll be jumping back to that location. And we'll start heading down until we head to the left inside of this room. Jump out to here. We'll jump on top of this uh, branch over here. Or no, we'll be coming back down this branch, I believe. Yes. <laughs> I forgot, forgot about this moment. Now just over the ledge on our left is where we're going to jump off from. We're going to jump down onto that pillar right there, over to our left. Now there's going to be another one of those clean rod uh, knights inside of this room. So just pull him out. We're going to have nothing else to deal with. Should be able to make quick work of this guy. Just dodge that spear ability of his. And actually inside of this uh, chest, we're going to have one of those clean rod summons from this. Now from this point, we'll need to head over to the right, jump on top of this railing, jump over to the right here. And inside of here is going to be another chest with a... I believe it's a somber, yeah, another somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Longest name in this game. Now over to our right, that purple item that I talked about earlier on in the video, that's going to be the seedbed curse. Now I'm not sure what we need those for after this point, after we've already given one to Dung already. I'll need to progress his side quest, see if we need more of them later on for more purposes. You know, if you know that, or if you know anything about what the rest of them are used for, let me know down in the comments. That way we can let other people know as well. But on that note, that's going to be the Michaela's Hallig Tree Guide, guys. Hopefully this has helped you out. Hopefully you don't have to take too long on that Melania's uh, boss fight. It's going to be a frustrating one, but huge payoff when it comes to the ability to grab up the weapon that she uses. 
Now, I'm not 100% certain, but that weapon may also give you life back on hit, but there's talismans and other things that you can use in order to get that type of ability. Would be something that'd be pretty interesting to have later on for some type of build, either going for bosses or in some type of PvP build. But on that note, that's going to wrap it up for us. Hopefully you enjoyed this, guys. If you would like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. We've got plenty more coming out, plenty more areas to cover, and we've got more than enough uh, content to make when it comes to side quests later on, PvP builds, maybe even uh, making some different types of builds that are pretty strong against boss types or certain bosses in general. But on that note, have a good one.